Hello, grade 8 learners. Welcome to our online mathematics class. For your learning competency, count the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment using table, tree diagram, systematic listing, and fundamental counting principle. And at the end of our discussion, you should be able to illustrate the different ways to count the number of outcomes in an experiment and solve the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment. Before we proceed to our lesson, let's have first this activity. Can you guess what is the word that is being illustrated by the given four pictures? Great! The answer is experiment. Now, let's continue. What do you think would be the next answer to this? Great job, learners! You got the correct answer. It's an outcome. This time, can you guess what is the word hidden in these pictures? Okay, the answer is event. Very good. And for the last picture, can you guess the hidden word here? Okay, I think you got the correct answer. It's the sample space. Great job, grade 8! Remember class that all the terms that you encountered in our previous activity is very important in understanding the topic that we're going to discuss today on counting the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment. Let's try to recall the terms that you have encountered while ago. We have the experiment, we have the outcome, we have the sample space, and the event. And when we say experiment, it is any activity with an observable result such as tossing a coin, rolling a die, choosing a card, and many more. We have also the outcome. It is a result of an experiment. Say for example, if you toss a coin, getting a tail, that is an outcome. Can you follow? Okay, we have the sample space. It is the set of all possible outcomes. Say, for example, in rolling a die, the outcomes could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And all these possible outcomes is referred to as the sample space. And the last, we have the event. It is the subset of the sample space. So, say, for example, in rolling a die, you have an event of getting 1 getting 2, getting 3, or 4, 5, and 6. Remember class that counting the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment is just simply counting the number of ways, the number of sample space, and the number of outcomes. In order for you to understand better how to count the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment, let's have this problem opener. Okay? So I want you class to meet my friend Jane. And Jane will celebrate her 18th birthday. But due to the pandemic, she could not have a party. So sad. So she is planning to have a pretty debut photo shoot and post it on her Instagram. Unfortunately, the only remaining clothes on her cabinet are the following. We have the tops and the bottoms. For her tops, we have the long sleeve, collar shirt, and blouse. And for her bottoms, we have the skirt, jeans, and short pants. How many OOTD options can Jane have? In this problem class, Making an OOTD is an experiment, okay? Remember that. And since we are going to find all the possible outfit that Jane could wear 
during her pre-debut photo shoot, then we are actually getting the total number of outcomes. Okay, so let us try to help Jane now identify all the possible outfit that she could wear on her pre-debut photo shoot. Are you ready? Okay, let's continue. The possible number of outfit that Jane could have can be represented by systematic listing. Okay, so when we talk about systematic listing class, the, the options here are systematically listed without missing any possibility or listing a possibility more than once. Okay, so let's try to list down all the possible outfit that Jane could wear on her pre-debut photo shoot. Okay, let's have this first pairing. Long sleeve and skirt, long sleeve and jeans, long sleeve and short pants. We have also collar shirt and skirt, collar shirt and jeans may do. We have also collar shirt and short pants. Another is blouse and skirt, blouse paired with jeans, and blouse paired with short pants. So do you have also the same listing while ago on the different outfit that Jane could have? Okay, if that's so, you did a great job. And by this listing method, systematic listing that we have done, how many possible choices that Jane could have now? Very good, there are nine possible choices. We could also represent the total number of outfit the chain could wear using three diagram. Okay, so I want you to take a look on how it is being done. So as you can see here, class, we have the branches and then counting the branches at the final level would actually give us the same number of possible outfit that we get when we use the systematic listing while ago. So there are still nine possible choices. So same, we have different uh, method, but we get the same answer. Okay, so another is, aside from systematic listing, we have the tree diagram. This time class, aside from using systematic listing, three diagram, the total number of outfit the chain could have can also be represented using table. So this would be another method again. So making use of rows and columns and counting the number of inner table cells for the total outcome. So I want you to take a look on how it is being represented. So we have here a table uh, using the rows and columns. It's up to you class uh, where to place the bottoms or the um, tops as long as we have the same number of inner cells because the, as you can see on the table, all the possible outfit are seen in the cells colored blue. Okay, so we still have the same answer. There are nine possible outfit. Okay, can you follow? Okay, I hope so. And lastly, we have the fundamental counting principle. It is also called the counting rule and basically you multiply the events together to get the total number of outcomes. So in the given experiment while ago, we have here the two events, the choices of um, Jane for her tops and bottoms. So these are the two events you're going to multiply them together as the rule says. So how many tops that Jane has while ago? 
she has 3 multiplied by 3 bottom, so it will give us a product equal to 9. This time class, I want you to apply what you have learned in counting the number of outcomes in an experiment. So let's have this given scenario. Suppose your sister asks you to look online for some cool treats to beat the summer heat. It so happened that in your FB news feed, you saw a newly opened milk tea shop that offers the following products with free delivery via Food Panda. And here are the options. For sizes, we have medium, large, and extra large. And for the flavors, we have the winter melon. Oreo, and Taro. What are the possible choices that your sister could have if it is presented in systematic listing? So now, this is your turn. I want you to answer this problem and I will give you 10 seconds to do it. Are you ready? Okay, your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, time's up. Let's see whether you got the same answer. So here are now the nine possible choices using systematic listing. So if you have the same answer, then well done learners. You did a great job. This time, let's have this another problem. A new polo shirt is released in four different colors. We have red, blue, green, yellow, in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. How many different color and size combinations are available to the public if it is presented in three diagrams? So I know you are excited to do it. Then I'm going to give you 10 seconds again. So your time starts now. Okay, time's up. Let's see if you got again the correct answer. Do you have the same answer with the given illustration? Then, good job, grade 8 learners. Keep it up. Now, let's consider this problem. How many possible outcomes are there in rolling a die? and tossing a coin if it is presented in table. Okay, so I know some of you are already thinking how it is being done. Then I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do it. You may start now. Alright, time's up. Let's reveal the correct answer. So how many of you here got the correct answer? Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Very good. Most of you got it correctly and two thumbs up for that. Lastly, we have the given problem at a restaurant. You have the choice of four different main courses, five different drinks, and six different desserts. If you are allowed to choose exactly one item from each category for your meal, how many different meal options do you have? Okay, so this time class, I want you to use the fundamental counting principle to identify the number total number of meal options you may start now okay there we go time's up for the fundamental counting principle we have 
To multiply the total number of events, we have four options for the meals, five options for the drinks, and six options for the desserts. Multiplying them together, it will give us a product of 120. So there are 120 possible options. How many of you here got it correctly? Okay, very good. And for your online quiz class, I want you to go to joinmyquiz.com. This is a scheduled online quiz. You can do it anytime, anyway. This is self-paced. Just enter the code 63525685. Okay, I hope that you have learned something today. And of course, for your assignment, you're going to make a reflection on the given question. What is the importance of knowing all the possible options or choices we have in our lives? Okay, so thank you very much, class, for listening. Thank you for your uh, cooperation. Have a great day ahead. God bless everyone.